Okay. We're only two days behind on our project here. <laughs> Getting parts can be a quest of monumental something or other. You need, you need all kind of endurance and patience. We finally went to GM, went to Chevrolet, and we got the correct high pressure switch. $38 instead of 25 to 28. We also bought ourselves an orifice tube. A little filter that goes in line. Don't know if it serves any other purpose or not, but we got a, an original AC Delco for $6 from Advance where Chevrolet was going to be, I think, well, I thought it was 35, but no, I think it was 16 is what Chevrolet was going to be. We have our new collector or dryer ready to go. We've just got to put our high pressure switch into the compressor with its C-clamp. And we will start putting everything on. But we, it was a mystery where this orifice tube went. Could have gone in three different places. The easiest place, of course, it wasn't, which was right there. Did put a new O-ring on it. Took the grill off because on, online everybody was saying it was right down here going in. But instead of trying that one, I went on and tried this one right up here. And that's where it is. So I'm going to make a separate little video of where the orifice tube is for people working on these uh, Chevrolet Express vans. But there you go, I'm gonna get that old one out, put the new one in, and then we'll proceed to button that part up and uh, put, the put the high pressure switch in the compressor, put it on, put the accumulator on, start vacuuming it down, and hopefully we'll have it running this afternoon. Okay, well, I am glad we replaced this, and I didn't know anything about this thing. Frank told me about it, and I thought he was lying to me. So then I checked it and got to looking at them, checking them online, and sure enough, and look at that thing, it is nasty. Boy. Okay, we installed the orifice tube and its opening over here. Got it tightened up. New O-ring, put some uh, lube on, around it. Now we have the collector or evaporator. I mean, well, the collector, the dryer installed back in. Everything's tight. The new Low pressure valve, the connection underneath there with the new washer. Now we're going to come over here and install the compressor. But what we're going to do next is put the oil and some dye in the compressor. The instructions say to add one fourth of an ounce to the oil. So we're going to do that now, and you can see on here it's marked three quarters, half, one quarter. So we will add one quarter ounce to the oil. The system holds six ounces of oil. We have put three in this baby bottle. The compressor came charged with pre-charged with three, so that'll be six ounces of oil, a quarter ounce of dye. So if we have any leaks, we should be able to find them.
Okay, we have installed the high pressure switch. And now we are ready. We have added the dye to the oil. We are ready to add the oil to the compressor and put the compressor into the cradle and tighten it down. And that sticker that came on the compressor said to add the oil in this side. So that's what we have done. We have rotated the compressor with the clutch, not the uh, freewheeler, but the clutch itself to distribute the oil a little bit. Now we will do it again when we put it in and uh, get the hoses hooked up to it. And I got to say, this, this is, I am not a professional. Do not take my advice. Um, that's a disclaimer. If you, you're at your own risk, anything you do that I show you how to do. <laughs> okay, we have set the compressor in the cradle. Got the four bolts started and got this bolt on the, for the hoses started. And uh, there again, do not follow my advice. This is just simply for a guide. Um, anybody who knows me knows I do not normally read instructions, paying attention to directions. I just jump in and go with something. But when I'm dealing with high pressure like this, where you could actually get hurt, seriously hurt or killed, I have read the instructions. I've watched several videos. And I was 50 years ago. <laughs> I was a GM certified technician, went to, had this schooling from GM and also in high school and worked on cars all my life. So it, uh, I'm not just your normal backyard person, but um, I certainly I'm not a professional for a long, long time. So we're going to tighten these up alternately. The instructions said to check it, once you sit it in the cradle, to check it to make sure it was not rocking. If it rocked, it could cause premature failure that the compress, pr compressor, if it's not lined up properly, and if, it's, uh, if the cradle is warped or the brackets are warped and it tightens them down and bends the compressor a little bit, that um, it's going to cause premature failure. So, see, I did read the instructions and follow directions on this. So I'm going to tighten these down alternately and evenly so that we will not take a chance on warping or causing that problem. And then we will connect everything back up, all the electrical, and we will be ready to put the vacuum line on it and uh, vacuum it down. Yeah, I checked it. It's not rocking. It's fitting perfectly in there. So we are now ready to tighten these bolts up alternately and evenly. I'm probably going to go from corner to corner, back to front. Try to keep it very even as I take them down a little bit at a time, not all at once. Okay, we got everything connected back up. We got the serpentine belt back on. We turned the compressor over four or five times to hopefully pump some of that oil out of it into the lines a little bit. Um, got the low pressure, high pressure hooked up to the vacuum pump. Been pumping about five minutes. And it has pulled down to between 25 and 30 PSI. And the high pressure is pulled down below zero. So uh, we'll let it vacuum. I'd like for it to get down to 30. It's inching down. Um, we'll probably turn it off in about 15 minutes just to see if there are any bad leaks. If it starts dropping, say, a pound pretty quickly, we'll know that there's a leak somewhere. But uh, while we're waiting for that to vacuum down, I'll go ahead and put the grill back on like it didn't, ended up not needing to take the grill off, but everything I was seeing online was showing that that uh, Orvis tube was down here in this line. And, uh, but there it is right back there, the Orvis tube. I mean the, uh, not Orvis tube, <laughs> the, whatever tube it is. The Orphis tube, not Orvis, the Orphis tube. So we'll connect that uh, grill back up while it is vacuuming down. Um, before we put the air filter and the water 
reserve tank back on. We will check to make sure it's not leaking down. I don't want to take them back off it if it is leaking. Um, hopefully, it will be. It'll hold 30 inches of vacuum for about an hour, and um, then we will put some Freon in it. And again. I recommend you take it here. Uh, air conditioning stuff, take to a professional. This stuff is under high pressure. Anything you do, you need to be very careful. You need to have good tools, good gauges, good lines, because you could get uh, seriously injured or killed messing with this air AC system. Okay, we've got the grill back on. We're going, it's been vacuuming down, I guess, about 15, 20 minutes. It's pulled 30 inches and it's below zero in the high pressure. We are going to close the valves, turn the vacuum pump off, and see if it holds for about five minutes and doesn't drop. If it does that, I'll go ahead and put the water reservoir and the air cleaner back on. We may do that anyway and put it with Freon and if it's leaking that way we, we got the dye in it we could find out where it's leaking but um, hopefully it's not leaking and we will um, continue vacuuming it down and then charge it up. Okay it has held steady so we're going to go ahead and put the water reservoir and the air filter back on it. We'll turn the vacuum pump back on. It's about quarter till seven. Let it vacuum down till about 7.30. And then uh, let it sit for about 15 minutes, see if it leaks. If it does not, we will go ahead and charge it up. If it holds tomorrow, I figure I'll probably save myself about $1,000 in labor. RV labor has gone to $160, $160 an hour. I'm not sure what mechanic labor is now. From the last time I checked, it was $130 an hour. And like I said, if this video, if it works or if it doesn't work, I've got other re, um, repair videos. Um, Any lock uh, module on this one, any theft module, whatever you want to call it, brake repair, in, uh, rear end swap out on a Jeep, Jeep uh, engine codes, Jeep hard starting. Got all kind of videos. Okay, while we're waiting for this thing to pump down, let's recap the tools we've needed. Not that many. We've used a uh, 13, 15 millimeter. We've used a, t a deep well 10, a deep well 13. We've used a 3/8, two different 3 8 ratchets, short extension, flathead screwdriver, Phillips head screwdriver. We use a crescent tool to get on one of these pipe fittings and a 22 millimeter. Let's see, what else? Oh, an inch and a quarter open end to take that uh, hose off down there, that pipe off. I think that's about all the tools. I may have forgotten something. But um, I also used Napa. I did put some Sylvania halogen light bulbs in. Well, I was waiting on getting, waiting to get parts. But I use Napa dryer and a Napa air compressor because they give you a lifetime warranty. But you have to keep the receipt. If you lose the receipt, you don't get that warranty. And they only replace the part. You're stuck doing it yourself on the labor. Um, I guess that's about it for this until we get this pumped down. But um, I hope to be pulling out on hitting the road um, Saturday or Sunday. I've got my RV batteries all charged up. I've got a charger. I've got a generator. Um, planning on living in campsites or parks or national forest. Getting video, uploading video to YouTube. Um, and then hopefully be able to take off for a month after the 16th. I've got to be back here the 16th of June. And then I can leave out again, hopefully for about a month. And um, maybe go out a little bit further west, up north. I'm not sure yet. So it seemed like there was something else I was going to tell you. Yeah, this GM takes PAG Oil 46. This particular engine takes, uh, our air conditioning system takes three pounds of Freon. 
the compressor has six inches, six inches, six ounces of oil. It comes pre-charged with three ounces, and we added three ounces, and we added an ounce of dye so that uh, we can detect any leaks. I said this system has been down about 10 years. We replaced the uh, orifice tube. It was very nasty and had to find it. I'm gonna do a separate little short video because like I said, it was over here in that tube right back there. I couldn't find it online. I was misled, so I ended up taking the grill out because everybody said it was down there at the bottom, but it wasn't. So uh, I will turn it off now and then maybe I hate to add to this, it's going to be getting long, but I'll probably add to it and uh, get the charging process and see if it cools down. I'm going to make another video of Frank's project over there, his JAG. I'll make a video of that. He's making some progress with that. He got the exhaust system in from England today. Nice looking system. It's a used, but it's a nice looking system. So uh, that's about it for right now. Yeah, he's got a brand new gas tank over there for it as well. So, about, about 30 more minutes of uh, pumping down, and then we'll put a, put a charge to it, see if it, see if it works. Okay, that thing kept recording. <laughs> I don't know if I can cut it or not. But anyway, we have put some in with this. We're going to crank it up now and uh, see what it'll do. It should start cycling on and off. Then we can add more Freon. And like I said, it holds three pounds. Those are 12-ounce cans. They used to be one-pound cans. So... Four 12 ounce cans is three pounds. Okay, I can hear the compressor kicking on and off. Keep putting it in and then we'll check for the see if it's getting cool in there. Okay, the, com the compressor is staying on a little bit longer. It's starting to get a little cool in there. We've got two cans in. I, I think you can probably hear that compressor kicking in and out. It should be half full. We'll get this can in and then we'll check that inside again. Okay, we have three cans in and it is hitting 56 degrees coming out of the vent. I've hit 51.2. I meant to do this before 
I forgot though, I forgot I had this like this uh, infrared thermometer. Okay, well we got three cans in. It's supposed to hold four. Let's see what the pressure gauge says. And see there again, I don't know exactly what I'm doing. I, I don't know exactly what these gauges mean when they're saying this. It's saying it's about full, but then it drops down almost to low. It's got three cans in it. I'm gonna go ahead and put part of this can in anyway. Okay, it's showing full, but it's showing on the low range of full, but we've got four cans in, so I'm satisfied. And the uh, temperature is nice and cool inside. I'll shoot it with the thermometer again. Let's see what it is. But it, uh, where'd my thermometer go? I'll find it and shoot it. It's showing 40 degrees coming out of there, 39. That may be too cold. CC, talk to me. <laughs> talk to me, buddy. Okay, I'm going to call it a night. Have a couple of cups of coffee, go to bed. See, how, see if it's still cool in the morning. <laughs> and this will wrap up my air conditioning video unless this um, doesn't work tomorrow or whatever. But yeah, see, I'm, I've got an electric bicycle. i got bicycle uh, videos. I've got my generator there. I want to get some solar panels on top. And I want to get a RV air conditioning that does the heating and cooling. Get it up there. Get some solar panels up there. Maybe get solar panels, on, put them on hinges where I can flip them up and keep my batteries charged. Once I got my RV batteries, I'm going to get a 50 amp power supply and install in here. That'll be another video. That'll be a good video. And uh, that way, I you know, hit the road to be van life. Living on the road. Been trying to get on the road two years. Maybe I'll make it this year.